Hey everybody, it's David. So I've just come back from a two week vacation, but whilst I was away, some news broke that I wanted to share with you about one of the most mysterious stars in the galaxy, Kick 8462852, also known as Tabby Star. This star has become a media darling and an object of great public interest ever since its discovery last year by Tabitha Boyachin, hence the name Tabby's Star. You might have also heard it called the WTF Star, which of course means where's the flux, right? The fascination with this object started when astronomers looked at NASA's Kepler data and they noticed that the brightness of this star changes in a way unlike any other previously seen. You can see here the shape of the light curve and in particular these very deep, prolonged and highly structured dips in starlight cannot be explained by conventional models. What promoted this star from being a mere astronomical curiosity to an object of intense public interest was when Professor Jason Wright, in an interview with The Atlantic, pointed out that some of the features observed resemble the types of features you might expect from an alien megastructure. Now, if you haven't already seen it, you can click here for Jason's Cool Worlds video, where he will give you his take about Tabby Star. Now, no professional astronomers, and least of all Jason Wright, are claiming this is the discovery or detection of an alien megastructure. However, it is also worth mentioning that this is not a God of the Gaps post hoc explanation. This was a prediction made about what alien megastructures would look like many years prior. Since the initial discovery of these bizarre dips in brightness, there has been considerable follow-up effort of this object. One of those efforts was to look back at photographic plates of how the brightness of this star has changed over about a century. Using these plates, Bradley Schaefer claims that Tabby's star actually dims by 20% over the course of a century. Now, stars really shouldn't do that, so something weird is going on. But Schaefer's analysis was publicly called into question, so maybe the star really wasn't fading after all. But thankfully, this controversy appears to have been resolved rather quickly, thanks to some new research from Ben Monte and Joshua Simon, which came out just last week. They confirmed that the star really does dim in the Kepler data by 3% over a span of four years. Okay, so sorry for taking a while to get there, but this was the news I was referring to, which came out during my vacation last week. Naturally, this has got the media stirring up headlines of alien megastructures once again. But what really is an alien megastructure anyway? The most popular concept is that of a Dyson Sphere. It actually even appeared in a Star Trek episode once. Mr. Data, could this be a Dyson Sphere? <laughs> in a paper from 1960, Freeman Dyson suggested that an advanced extraterrestrial civilization might choose to try and harvest all of the energy produced by its parent star. In the concept of a Dyson Sphere, this is accomplished by constructing a truly gigantic, solid shell encompassing the star. Our current understanding of material science makes such a structure quite unphysical. We really could not ever build such a thing. Moreover, this certainly doesn't explain Tabby's star. I mean, if there was a solid shell around the star, Kepler wouldn't have even seen it in the first place. Perhaps a better explanation in the case of Tabby's star would be a Dyson swarm. Here you don't have a solid continuous shell, but you just have many, many satellites orbiting at the distance of, say, the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Besides from harvesting solar energy, it has also been suggested that megastructures might be constructed as a means of communicating one's presence across the cosmos. In 2005, Luke Arnold proposed that this could be achieved by constructing giant planet-sized triangles or squares or other artificial shapes which do not resemble spheres. Now, if from our perspective we see that giant triangle transit in front of the star, the light curve would look really weird, and we might think there is evidence for an advanced civilization there. Indeed, some of Arnold's predicted signatures resemble what we see on Tabby's star. Now, I remember when I first saw that paper, I thought this is a really fun idea. But, of course, it's way beyond our technological abilities to build a Jupiter-sized triangle right now. That actually inspired a paper that Alex Tichy and I put out earlier this year, suggesting that creating artificial transits, such as those predicted by Arnold, would be far easier using lasers rather than building giant structures. In fact, you can even use those lasers to not just actively communicate your presence, but even hide your presence to cloak your planet. If you haven't already seen that, you can click here for Alex Tichy's video explaining all about cloaking planets. So yes, we might be able to explain Tabby's star using lasers or artificial transits, 
But does that mean we really believe it? In my opinion, no. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. An alien megastructure is definitely an extraordinary claim, and we do not have extraordinary evidence to support that hypothesis at this time. Okay, yes, we can't exclude that hypothesis yet either, but I'd say it's much, much more likely that this is just a current gap in our knowledge of how stars work. After all, what kind of scientist would we be if every time we saw something we didn't understand, we said aliens? The one thing you can bet on, though, is that astronomers, including us here at the Cool Woods Laboratory, will be paying very close attention to this exciting star. So to stay up to date with that and all of the other research conducted here at the Cool Woods Laboratory, make sure you click the subscribe button below. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. We should be going back to our regularly scheduled programming of about one new video per week. So until then, stay curious.